In this video, I'm going to give you the resources that I found most helpful when self-studying Galois theory. We'll go over two online textbooks, one by J.S. Milne, the other by Thomas Judson. Then we'll go over a physical textbook by I. N. Herstein. And finally, a YouTube series by Ben1994. I'll also give you an example syllabus, which is the one that I used when I studied Galois theory. Just so you know, the parentheses here, FT means it covers field theory, and GT means it covers Galois theory, because Galois theory is typically, first part is about fields, and the second part is about how to connect these fields to everything you've been learning in group theory so far. Only two of these sources actually cover Galois theory completely, but nonetheless, Herstein and Ben1994 are useful for the first part about field theory. By the way, on the top right is a sketch of the creator of Galois theory, Evariste Galois, when he was a boy. Galois died mysteriously and tragically in a duel at the age of 20. Now let's get into the resources that'll help you learn. The backbone of the course that I did was J.S. Milne's online textbook. I did chapters 1 through 5, which essentially form a first course in Galois theory. This is significantly denser than some other textbooks. It's also more terse and expects more from the reader. So you will need a strong background in group and ring theory. In other words, a strong background in abstract algebra in order to be able to read this successfully. And in addition, there aren't too many exercises and they are typically difficult. It's a good idea to supplement Milne with some other sources and specifically sources that have more practice. One of those sources is Thomas Judson's free online textbook on abstract algebra. Chapters 20 through 23 cover most of Galois theory, which means chapters 1, 2, 3, and 4 of Milne. Only chapter 5 of Milne has some more content that's not covered in Judson. But what is great about Judson is that he has much more detail and many more examples than Milne has, and he has far more practice exercises. Some of them even have hints and solutions. As you're reading through Milne, it's a good idea to read simultaneously through Judson. You'll find that there's not too much that's new, but it's rather that you're getting an elaboration of what you've learned about already in Milne. And there are also lots of applications given. For example, you can see that under chapter 22 on finite fields, there's an optional section on polynomial codes if you're interested. Judson's textbook is online, so it actually offers something that Milne's can't as a PDF. Judson has interactive programming exercises, if that is something that you're interested in doing. Another great source of practice, especially if you got this textbook already for MIT's 18.703, is Abstract Algebra by I. N. Herstein. The final two chapters contain content on field theory, and they stop before what's equivalent to chapter 3 of Milne. So still quite useful if you want to use some of these practice problems as you're getting into Milne. And Herstein, like Judson, has many more examples than Milne and many more exercises. So this is great to supplement the first part of J.S. Milne's notes. Ben1994 also has a YouTube series on field theory. Like Herstein, this doesn't go into Galois theory. Most videos are 20 to 30 minutes long, and they're very in-depth with step-by-step -step proofs and lots of examples. So if Milne is going too quickly, or for some reason something isn't clicking even when you read Judson or even Herstein, then you can supplement them with these videos by Ben1994. Now there are some scattered videos that he's made about Galois theory as well, but none of them that are collected into a playlist. So I listed this as only covering field theory, but in reality you could probably get a fair bit of the Galois theory content on Ben1994's channel as well. Galois theory was the first course that I had really self-studied without a backbone of an MIT open courseware syllabus, so I had to make my own syllabus for this course, and I've copied it here so you can see the practice problems and the reading that I had scheduled for every week along with the topics and a description. You can see the power of a self-study in action here, because what I had originally planned to be six weeks eventually ballooned into 12 because Galois theory was much more dense than I expected, so I ended up averaging about one problem set every two weeks. But because this was a self-study, there were no constraints, so I could take the time I needed to really understand the concepts. I made this syllabus with the help of a mentor, and his expertise in Galois theory was, was useful because he could go through Milne, Herstein, and Judson to find exercises and reading that would be helpful for me. So it would be much more difficult to make a syllabus like this 
by yourself because you haven't taken the course so you're not really sure what's useful to put on it so if you can manage to secure an hour of someone's time who is familiar with this they can help you to build a syllabus based on the resources available in this video or you can use this as an example this is not a comprehensive list of resources because i wanted to only present the resources that were most helpful for me when I was learning Galois theory, but there are many more available on the internet. So as you're learning Galois theory, keep your eyes open, find what works for you. And if you haven't already, go and watch my video called Self-Study Strategies for Math. It explains how you can take all these resources that you now have for learning Galois theory specifically and combine them into a really successful self-study experience. So have fun, good luck, and I hope you enjoy learning about Galois theory it is one of the most beautiful topics in mathematics.